Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and this is Big Boy Sports, and we have a lot to discuss. We have a lot to discuss, and it's particularly talking about conference realignment. Um, you know, it has been a topic that has come up in the past week or so, and, you know, realignment has been crazy, and it has been beyond our understanding with the whole Oklahoma and Texas situation going we'll to the SEC. Um, now there's been all sorts of collusion and things like that apart from ESPN's part. Remember way back when a decade ago when the Big East broke up? It was a messy breakup, very messy breakup in which the Catholic Seven took the Big East name, took the tournament at MSG and said deuces, we're out of here. We're, we're here for basketball. We're not here for this football nonsense. And the other football schools became the American Athletic Conference, you know, which is basically, essentially, they're what the CUSA is now, you know, as far as the American, you know, as far as the American goes, they're like the CUSA of the early 2000s, a really, really strong major conference that can put up and shut up, well, you know, around, you know, like the early 2000s uh, Mountain West, you know, that that or rather late to 2010s Mountain West. Late, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know. I, I'm messing up my dates here. Messing up my dates. Uh, but yeah, the American right now is like where the Mountain West was with Boise, TCU, and BYU were dominating in Utah as well. And you know, a couple times when there was a CUSA team that looked really strong as well. You know, that's what I'm trying to allude to here. And now there's reports, you know, of the AAC potentially saying, hey. So y'all, so y'all, eight Big Twelve schools that are left, y'all want to come on over here to our conference? You know, we can have a little fun. You know, we can have a good old time. You know, make our conference stronger. You know, take about three to five of y'all. You know, we'll, I don't know where the I don't know where the other three to five schools are, gonna go, but we'll take three to five of y'all, and you know, it'll it'll be good. It'll be fun. You know, we'll have some great time. You know, for, for, you know, it'll be great for basketball. It'll be great for football. It'll be great for all of us. You know. It'd be great. It'd be great. And the SEC is saying, you know, we're trying to get to 16. I mean, hey, it is what it is. The Oklahoma, Texas people have been saying, oh, well, we planned this for months. We planned this for months. We're, we're done with this. We're done with the Big 12. We're done with the Big 12's nonsense. We're done playing, you know, games at noon Eastern on a Saturday afternoon where Oklahoma is. And, you know, there's all sorts of things going on with that. Also, the longer network, that could potentially be used instead to buy Texas's way out of the Big 12. Because remember, you know, ESPN took a big contract, which, wasn't, which probably wasn't supposed to happen. It is probably the only reason why Texas is still in Big 12. If it weren't for that, we'd be saying, hey, Pac-16, baby, Pac-16, you know, the Pac-16, you know, that whole idea, that would have been a great idea. No, actually, wouldn't have been a great idea, actually, don't, don't quote me on that. Um, yeah, conference realignment has been crazy, and it's been a, it's been a total storm, it's been a total pariah, and now people are, like, coming up. 16 team conference scenarios for each and every conference with the Big 12 probably going to die you know because I mean there's no way there's still some value in the Big 12 now but Fox isn't gonna want that we know that you know they're, they're probably going all in on the Big 10 either them or CBS eventually and the Pac-12 and the Mountain West and ESPN is just like oh we'll take we'll take that offer Scoop that up, make it something good. So this is probably all ESPN's fault. This is probably ESPN Texas and Oklahoma's fault <laughs> that the Big 12 is like this. Bob Bowsby, you know, has been like, what, 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 what do we do? He's in shambles right now. He doesn't know what to do. He's trying to do cease and desist letters out here, and everything's just going crazy. But here's my spin on it. Here's my spin on it, real quick. Texas and Oklahoma. I, I said last week. You know, I said I didn't want Texas and Oklahoma in the in the SEC. I said I said that last week. See how quickly things change. I am for it. 
I am all in for it. I want this to happen. You know, with the whole NIL thing, you got guys like Bryce Young getting eight hundred thousand dollars. You know, you know, just like that off of sponsorships. You know how much money there is in the SEC. And the, the, we could be out of here. It, we could, you know, the Horns and OU could be out of here by twenty twenty two. I don't think this is going to take, you know, as long as some people might say. It's no way. It's no way that the Horns in Oklahoma are going to stay until 2025. I believe it will be 2022 or 2023, and they'll be gone. And we'll get that sweet, sweet Red River rivalry on, on big CBS, maybe, potentially, hopefully. Please, I want it. I want that matchup on CBS. One more time before it goes all the way to ESPN again. Please. Back so what about other conferences? I, I've speculated on you know some other conferences in the past, like the MEAC, and you know just to go off on this section, let's, let's just talk about smaller conferences real quick because there's supposed to be a little bit, of, there should be a little bit of a domino effect here. Um, yeah. So whatever the American is going to do with those big, with the rest of the Big Twelve, or if the Big Twelve adds the rest of the American teams, you know, it, it could be potentially. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what could happen with that. You know, it could be, you know, something that works out. Could be something that doesn't work out. The American is pretty, it's honestly stable right now. It's honestly stable. They just need to get, they either need to contract, lose a member, or, or go to 12, you know, because there's, I don't know if the NCAA is going to allow them to keep, you know, the conference championship with just 11 members. I don't know how they're going to do that. There's no way you can have a 10 game conference schedule again like you did last year with the SEC, the ACC. You can't do that. You know, conferences. I don't, I don't think the American can afford that. So, you know. Who knows? Who knows? Who knows what's going to happen there? I don't you know, honestly, the whole 16-team conferences thing, I don't, I want to say it will happen, but at the same time, something in me is like, no, I don't want this to happen. I mean, we see the difficulties with the ACC and the Big Ten having, you know, 28 conference schedules and stuff like that. College basketball, we see difficulties in college football as well, you know, with, you know, the clubs that take pretty much easily, you know, getting through the ACC Atlantic. You know, the Coastal's always a mess, and, you know, it's just kind of not fun all the time. And Notre Dame won't even join. I mean, there's no way, unless Notre Dame says, hey, we're going we're gonna to do it. We're going to do it. We're going to stick to a conference this time. We're going to stick to the ACC. We're going to join the football. It is what it is there. That's what we're going to do. Unless they say that, you know, there you go. I don't know. I don't know. And I don't know who would the ACC add. The only candidate, really, is West Virginia. That's it. That's the only candidate for the ACC. Pac-12, Pac there's no way they're going to add TCU and Baylor. And I don't think they're going to add Kansas, either. I think the Pac-12 is fine where it is. They need they need to get rid of the Pac-12 network. That's what they need to get rid of. And they need to get their, they need to get their act together. That's what the Pac-12 needs to do, is get their act together. Out outside of the football and basketball field and on it. They need to get their act together. Big Ten, I don't think the Big Ten needs anything. They're probably going all in with Fox. Like I said, you know, ACC's already all in with ESPN. Same thing with the SEC. They're all in with ESPN. I don't think they're going anywhere. Neither of those two conferences are, are going to do anything. You know, aside from what I've said already, ACC probably going to add West Virginia. Maybe Notre Dame. Maybe they'll keep Notre Dame, you know, it'll have a nice north-south split, you know, for the ACC. Or, you know, I don't know. And then there's also the talk of pods, which is stupid. I mean, I don't, I don't like the idea of pods. It doesn't make any sense to me, but whatever. Whatever, get, whatever you know, keeps you guys on the realignment boards up at night, because there's a lot of those types of posts that keep me up at night. I'll tell you that much. You know, I just have to read the stupidity on these posts, you know, on realignment boards, you know, the CSN, BBS boards, if that's the main one that I go to. 
but yeah, smaller conferences, really. Um, you know, it's a big trickle down effect. I don't think the MAC will do anything. I don't think the Mountain West will do anything, really. Um, I don't think the Sun Belt will really do anything. And Conference USA just needs to get rid of two teams and put them in the Sun Belt. You know? I mean, we, we, there's been so many discussions of what this conference, of what Conference USA the Sun Belt should do, so that's really the only thing there that I think should happen. But yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I really don't. I really don't. But this is just talking about major FBS stuff. I don't think, you know... I don't think this really impacts, you know, smaller conferences. You know, there are smaller conferences that do need some help. Like the A-Sun. They need to get to six football members. And this is going to be talking about, you know, mostly FCS, you know, football and stuff like that. And these smaller conferences that aren't mid-major conferences or high-major conferences or anything like that, or the Power Five, you know, or the Uber Five or anything like that. But, get, but conferences like the Sun, they just need to add, you know, another football member and maybe a basketball member. And the one that comes to mind is Austin P. Um, you know, for the Sun, that's really the only candidate that I think they could add. There's no way I don't think Chattanooga is going to come. You know, there was a D1 through 6, they made a great video on this topic. You know, I don't know. Maybe I'll link that in the description or something like that. But, you know, for the A sun, I think that's really the only thing that they should do is add maybe one school, maybe another school from D2. You know, that's what people have been saying. Add a school from D2 if they can't get Chattanooga or something like that. Uh, for the OVC, it's time to get Western Illinois. That's pretty much the only thing I can say. You know, think you know that that will make it perfectly fine you know it'll make it make it nice and good for you know, the OVC um, for the WAC they just need to get rid of Seattle that's really the only thing Seattle cast yourselves off to the big sky just go to the big sky you know I think the big sky you know hasn't made you know this is you know, the big sky has been having 11 members for quite a while. They've gone to 20 games in college basketball. They've done pretty well in football. You know, they're one of the best conferences in FCS football. So, you know, that, that that's it there. You know, and the A-Sun trying to be the, old, the SEC of the F F FCS. I don't think that's going to happen. You know, the Missouri Valley is still there. And so along with the CAA, you know, they're still there as well. You know, with the big sky, that makes up a a trio you know, of conferences that get a lot of bids to the NCAA, you know, FCS championship tournament. So what about the WAC? I think the WAC will be fine. You know, maybe New Mexico State has to move down. There's no point in New Mexico State being in the FBS anymore. There's no point. Move down. It's time to move down, you know. You've had your fun. You've had your turn. You know, speaking of independence, I think Liberty could go somewhere, maybe the AAC, you know, that will free up, you know, space for Austin P. If, 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 you know, I, I, that's honestly what I want to happen. Liberty to just go to another conference, you know, and, you know, that could free up space for Austin P. So the, so that the A-Sun doesn't have to add another, have to add like two or three schools. I don't think, I don't think Liberty wants to be in the A-Sun, you know, I think they want to be somewhere different. You know, now that they have FBS football, I don't think they want to be, you know, in the FCS. Uh, you're rather not, you're rather in the A-Sun, my bad, excuse me. But yeah, this is a quite a long video. It's just me rambling about conference realignment, you know, and stuff like that. But really the big thing, Oklahoma, Texas, ESPN, the SEC, the Big 12, it's a big, big collusion, conspiracy theory going on. Um, what, what else? Um... I think, yeah, that's pretty much it. I think the MEAC is fine. You know, a lot of people have been saying, oh, well, the MEAC needs to add somebody. I think they're fine. You know, the Celebration Bowl got renewed for a couple more years, and they put the um, they put the MEAC Swag Challenge in Week 0 in Atlanta, even though that's going to be hot as hell. I think it's. I think the MEAC will be fine at 18. So I think the Southland, they could add somebody, but who are they going to add from D2? There's nobody from D2 that really needs to get called up right now. Nobody from D2 from any conference needs to get called up right now. 
in all honesty. In all honesty, I don't think I don't think there's gonna be any, any D2 call-ups, really. It's not gonna happen. So I think the MEAC will be fine. If they do something like the Southland did this year for their conference schedule, where they have like a basketball, where they have like a tournament before their conference, you know, games, they have like a little mini tournament, you know, three consecutive days, I think the MEAC will be fine. They could they can feast on body bag games, you know, get that money, get that paper, you know, keep funding themselves, you know, it is what it is there, and I mean, it just is what it is, it is what it is, I don't think a lot of conferences really need any, you know, more restructuring and things like that, I think it's just a couple of simple moves, you know, to really get things going, and keep things stable, I think a lot of these conferences are stable right now. Now, sure, there's a couple with, you know, some geographical differences, you know, but, you know, conference realignment has been a little bit crazy with the whole Texas Oklahoma thing. It's really, that's really the main one, but honestly, most conferences are fine. They're mostly fine, you know, in the last decade or so really just, really just kind of signal that things are going to be okay. Things are fine. And what about the NCAA? What can you say about the NCAA? Are they going to die? Are they going to finally, you know, bite the bullet, bite the dust? I don't know. Because the SEC, now people are like, oh, well, the SEC has more power than the NCAA. The SEC already does have more power than the NCAA. The NCAA is just there, okay? So, yeah, this is a particularly long-winded, you know, discussion, conspiracy, rant, whatever you want to call it. And I'm Big Boy Sports, saying so long. I'll see you in the next video. See ya, everybody.